Noel, I'm very happy to have you with us today. Now, I've been in the database field for many years. And when I started in the field, there are basically two types of workloads, transactional workloads, or OLTP, and analytic workloads, or data warehousing. Can you tell us more about this translytical concept, how it came about, and where you see it going next? Translytical data platform is this new generation of data platform, uh, which has emerged more recently uh, to tackle some of these uh, crazy, you know, leading, emerging applications and insights, which was so difficult to do. Uh, in essence, it's a unified platform to doing multiple workloads, whether you're doing um, transactional workloads, whether you're doing operational workloads, or if you're doing analytical workloads, all together in a single platform. And the good thing about this platform is that there's no compromise on the performance, the scale, the security, um, the integration itself. So you can really get benefits of all of these things together in a single platform, uh, which is really amazing. You know, we haven't had that opportunity to doing these kind of things before. Um, and if you look at it from a platform uh, perspective, there's many things involved in the platform itself. Now, why is this different than what we've done in, in the past? In the past, we have done transactional system separate, operational system separate, analytical system separate. The data moves from transactional systems to the operational systems to the analytical systems. <laughs> By the time it gets to the uh, BI user, it's 24 hours late, basically. And today, the age of the internet and the mobile computing is demanding us having real-time information. So we can't really have those gaps right there. Uh, this is one of the biggest issue where loading data is so slow between these platforms. We've got three different platforms emerging. And the Translytical is all about a single platform which actually can drive all these use cases in a, in a single environment, which is phenomenal, actually. No, well, that was very insightful. Uh, are there examples of uh, translatical applications that you feel are not well served by many existing databases today? Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, you know, if you look at it, um, these new generation of applications are demanding uh, more real-time information, first of all. So a lot of real-time data for applications, insights, microservices applications are needing this data and to be available right away. Mm -hmm. It needs to be consistent, it needs to be trusted, it needs to be real-time. So all of these real-time applications for e-commerce, for web applications, for customer experience are demanding this data platform, right? Uh, so that's the reason why data platform is emerging quite rapidly in these industries because you can do real-time um, insights and application building, which I think is phenomenal. The second areas we see is IoT analytics as well. IoT also requires a lot of sensor data, and this also needs to happen real time, right? I mean, you can't just actually get data from these in batches and, and get the delay uh, re responses on analytical things. You need to really respond very quickly for these kind of environments. So we definitely see IoT analytics as being one of the big areas of focus as well. Uh, there's customer 360, which is always a big case. <laughs> Customers want to, pro I mean, these uh, different enterprises want to provide a better view of customer data from a customer experience perspective, customer interaction perspective, and customer analytical perspective as well. So, you know, having real-time information is very cr critical. Imagine you want to be able to place uh, these car services uh, based on the demand where they exist in real time. You don't want to look at tomorrow's, you know, yesterday's data or even, even data which is like one week old because it dynamically changes all these things. So there's a lot of these new applications demanding real-time information, real-time insights. So that's one area, uh, but we see it healthcare industries uh, looking for these kind of information. Uh, we're seeing financial services, oil and gas, uh, retailers uh, for IoT, customer 360, uh, real-time insights. There's also fraud detection, which financial services are doing a lot with Translytical as well. So there's many, many different areas of focus we see today in Translytical. So it seems like a key theme is real-time processing. And uh, we actually hear from many of our customers right. that they would prefer a unified data platform yeah. for enabling real-time processing and translatical operations. What is your experience in this area? Well, if you look at it in, in terms of the translatical data platform, there are many components within this platform. This is not your traditional database, which has been there. 
Uh, there's many different components. And, and one of the components which we see growing rapidly within the platform is this in-memory computing, uh, especially as the memory uh, prices have been falling down. Uh, but also, uh, we got these new generation of persistent memory and Optane memory available. You got SSD flash, you got, um, you got uh, DRAM available. Uh, you can also tier the data across DRAM, flash, SSD, and persistent memory to really take advantage of large-scale memory deployments, which we have never done before. The biggest problem, if you know, the, the bottleneck in, in databases has always been disk drives <laughs> in the past. So this is actually really changes the game. Uh, you can run 100 times faster, 1,000 times faster than traditional platforms, which I think is phenomenal. Um, second areas we see is obviously the whole notion of um, optimization of these workloads. You can run multiple workloads, transactional, operational, analytical. So there's a workload management which knows exactly what uh, you know, environments are running, what kind of queries are running, what transactions are running, and, and you want to be able to allocate the memory resources, the storage resources, the, the, the processing resources available within this uh, architecture as well. So that obviously is a very fundamentally an important point, uh, part of this whole uh, data platform of Transalytical. Other areas are compression of data. Um, you know, you want to compress data as much as possible as well. Not just put data into, into memory, <laughs> but you want to optimize the memory as well. There could be hot data, you could be warm data, you can be cold data, so you want to optimize it from compression perspective. Compression actually really reduces the footprint of data, which I think is phenomenal as well. Um, there's also the automation that's needed from ingestion to transformation to integration within the platform as well. So the automation plays a very big role. Um, I, th I think that's the phenomenal area we see uh, happening, especially in the trends around databases, the uh, uh, no, automated uh, environments are going to be critical, especially when you're loading data, querying data, uh, optimizing it. Uh, you want to do automation as much as possible as well. So these are some of the areas we see a lot more happening. Um, and, and also, I think one area which I think uh, we just uh, seen uh, more trigger of is uh, multi-model where you want to store multiple data, whether it's uh, structured data, unstructured data, semi-structured data within the same platform. Uh, especially applications want to demand, microservices applications want to demand this multi-formatted data as well, which I think is phenomenal as well. So, so this actually changes the way you're building these environments. Now, if you look at it, what I described, <laughs> you probably need 10 different databases to do that. Translytical is, is a single platform which can do all these things together in, a, in one environment and then drives all these new generation of applications which you couldn't do before. You know. Thank you, Noel, for that insight. This is why Oracle has adopted a converged architecture for data management. Instead of requiring a separate discrete database for each individual workload, Oracle Database uses the common storage manager with different processing algorithms for different types of workloads. For instance, Oracle Database has a dual format in-memory architecture with a row store for transaction processing and an in-memory column store for real-time analytics, thereby enabling efficient translatical processing. In addition to this, Oracle Database has many algorithms for document database support, for graph database support, spatial data types, et cetera, as well as machine learning. Noel, you mentioned automation as being very important for translatical platforms. Can you say a little bit more about this? Yeah, no, that's a good point, actually. Um, what we see is as the automation within translatical platform is the automation from a tuning perspective, we call self-tuning and, and self-healing, which means it needs to be available 24-7. It also needs to handle multiple workloads as well, right, as I mentioned. Uh, so like you're handling transactional workloads, operational workloads, analytical workloads. All of these have to be done in a systematic manner. You want to make sure transactions are running at the highest speed, right? But also your queries are running or all these translatical platforms are running. So important area is that the automation has to be from a tuning perspective, from a management perspective, from an administration perspective. And this is a big area because when you're going to start loading data into this platform, it needs to be automated as well, right? So we see automation being a big enabler. We call it self-service. And the self-service architecture is going to be a big thing for all the application going forward. No one wants to spend time to building this platform from ground up, actually, which can take them months and months trying to build this. So you need to have automation as much as possible from high, high availability perspective, scalability, performance, and even security it needs to be all self-serviced. Thank you, Noel. For this reason, we have built Oracle Autonomous Database, which greatly simplifies enterprise architecture by eliminating trial and error. It is the world's first self-driving, self-securing, self-repairing, converged translatical database. Autonomous Database is a very successful new offering from Oracle with 2,000 customers added last quarter, and it is running some very large converged or translatical workloads. 
For instance, Oracle Warehouse Management Cloud, formerly known as Logfire, is the industry's leading cloud-based inventory and warehouse management system. They migrated hundreds of production databases from Rackspace to Oracle Autonomous Database. This massive cloud service supports a translatical workload, which has simultaneous inventory management transactions and inventory analytics within the same database. Veritrans is another example of a large autonomous database customer. They have built a new cashless payment system like Apple Pay for the upcoming Olympics in Japan. The system is a translatical application with a very large number of point-of-sales terminals issuing transactions along with real-time analytics on that same sales data. Noel, given the obvious importance of translatical data platforms, what guidance do you provide to clients who want to go in this direction? Any roadblocks or concerns you think that they should be aware of? Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, uh, the guidance we provide to customers is that, um, first of all, you can start looking at collapsing the stack. Um, you know, a lot of organizations have built so many different stacks. Uh, you got, as I mentioned, transactional stacks, you got operational stacks, you got analytical stacks, and, and these are replicated across different uh, types of workload uh, applications, I guess, and, and insights. And, and this is very problematic because all these stacks actually are humongous and, and, and we need to collapse those stack collapse the stacks uh, in the translatical platforms. So that's one good direction to look at. Uh, areas where you can remove these servers and these systems which are not needed. Like why do you need all these systems, right? You can lower your cost actually by actually removing these systems actually, right? So definitely look at collapsing the stacks as one of the big initiatives there. Um, you also have to look at uh, all of these tiered storage. Um, you can actually, don't just focus on, on one particular part of memory like DRAM, but also look at uh, persistent memory, um, you know, obtain, uh, but also SSD uh, along with DRAM as well. So you've got to have a tiered storage, which is very important as well. And then also look at security. <laughs> uh, because the fact that you're bringing all this data into a single platform can cause, uh, can cause an alarm, you know, because <laughs> it could be sensitive data. You want to make sure the data is protected from all of these unauthorized users. You want to make sure data is encrypted if necessary as well. Right? So those things would have to be enabled. Uh, some of the concerns we have heard customers telling us, are obviously security being one big concern, which people have talked about it, but also uh, scalability. Some platforms, which are data uh, platforms for data analytical platforms or translatical platforms, don't really have a scalable platform, which means they can't really scale very well. Um, but also they can't really do very well in terms of automation from a platform perspective. Um, and, and also from a security, they don't really have complete control there as well. Um, and some of these workloads can't even do better optimization of um, workloads, like translatical workloads, like transactions and operations of, of segregation and management as well. So that's a big concern as well. So I, th I think, you know, if you look at it from an overall perspective, uh, people definitely need to start on embarking on this journey of translatical. Uh, it's not that every application is suitable for uh, translatical, but there'll be certain applications that demand, I need to run analytics at the speed of transactions. Uh, those kind of applications, demanding applications, need to really start to take off in, in a big way for organizations. And, and you can look for new applications, but also existing applications could be benefiting from this. You know, It was great having you with us today, Noel. To wrap things up, can you tell us your perspectives on the future of translatical data platforms? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, there, there are two areas I can focus upon in, in terms of um, the future of translatical. One is the business side. And, and second is the technology side, right? On a business front, we see a lot of things about self-service, which means that the users themselves want to be able to get to the data themselves quickly enough. Uh, systems should be automated as much as possible, right? Uh, from getting to the data for analytics, for transactions, for operational insights, a lot quicker. So this is a big thing. The real-timeness of data is an important drive in, in every industry, whether it's retailer, healthcare, oil and gas, and, and government agencies. Everyone wants real-time data today. And translatical, I think, is another area which is going to be excelling uh, a lot more in every direction, right? I think only 15, 20% of the companies today are actually doing translatical work, but definitely it's going to be a lot of phenomenal things happening in the future as well. Uh, there's also the demand for having more uh, connected data. 
Uh, there's a lot of silos of data existing in organizations, which is spreading also in the cloud now as well, right? Uh, so you want to have connected data with this translatical platform, which I think is going to be important direction. You want to do connected data for uh, customer 360, customer intelligence, IoT, what have you, right? So that's the business side of the thing where it's going to help a lot from the use cases which are emerging, but also this new generation of applications people are building. Um, technology front, it will be a large scale in memory, right? Uh, we have seen you know, tens of terabytes in memory today, but I think going forward, we're going to see hundreds of terabytes into petabytes in memory uh, with Translytical, uh, which include uh, SSD, Flash, Optane running in together as a harmony. Another area I think we're going to see is distributed data across multiple data centers, which is going to grow. Not all data, all data is going to be in one single location of data centers. So we're going to have a, a translatical platform which emerges across these different data centers, uh, whether it's on-premises, whether it's the cloud, whether it's multiple data centers as well. This is going to be a big area. And the third area, I think, is going to be around automation, right? This is going to be a big thing. Uh, no one wants to spend time on tuning uh, these uh, translatical platforms, whether you're running on um, operational reporting, insights, or even analytical things, right? So the system should be automatically tuning and optimizing and, and making sure it's running 24-7 all the time as well for these critical applications. So I think a lot of expectations are there on these newer generational platforms, uh, which will take, it, take us to the next level for application insights, application uh, um, no operational reporting, but also these uh, transactional systems as well. Thank you for the insight, Noel. It sounds like based on what you said, Oracle is on the right track with its different initiatives for converged data management, autonomous database, and in-memory processing to handle translatical workloads for the future. Thank you very much for being with us today, Noel. Great talking to you as well. <laughs>